Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgcave.com and today we are going to learn about the standard primitives in 3ds Max. Uh, you may want to start to think about these uh, primitives as starting points of your models. And as you can see here, we have a list and as the name suggests, they, they are basic shapes like box, uh, spheres, cylinders and so on. Probably the box is the most one of the most important, maybe the most important shape in 3ds Max because we usually start from a box or a plane or a cylinder or a sphere, I guess. And these four starting points are very common in 3ds Max. And uh, how do you get into these commands is you go to the command panel on the right side in here and you go to uh, create uh, geometry standard primitives. And here are the object types you can choose from. Whenever you click one of these, uh, as you can see, uh, the selected one will show in a different color. If you have a different interface, this color will change. So it's not about the color, but the change of the color, I guess. And then when you, your cursor change to this icon in here, you are into the, in the command and you can start drawing or modeling uh, whatever you want. How to draw a box is you just click and hold on the scene, just drag uh, to create the base and then release and you need to set the height and click again and when you go to the modify tab you can see your boxes properties and the length width height you can change them from here you can input uh, certain values as you know from before uh, let's change this to 30 by 30 centimeters and you can change the segments as well if you hit f4 you can see the edge uh, segments in here and if i increase these segments you can see that we have more uh, of these segments to play with. Uh, try to think of these segments as if you uh, add an edit poly modifier on top, then you can hit two and select these, for example, and you can play with them and you can create different details on the shape. Uh, this is what these segments are good for. And also, uh, don't worry if you missed to create more segments at the start. And this is how things work in 3ds Max generally. You usually add uh, more detail as model progresses. So you can do uh, you can do this adding the segments stuff in the edit poly modifier as well. There's a, a command called connect, for example. I'm not going to go get into this that much, but I just want to show you that you can add them later on. If you select one of these, hit ring, then connect. You can see that we have added an edge segment later on. Okay, let's delete this for now and stick with the box for this tutorial. But just keep in mind that these are starting points where we can add more details later on, okay? For example, let's say you are an inter interior designer and you want to create an interior space in 3ds Max. You would go with boxes, right, to create walls, uh, let's say. You don't need to, but you can. Uh, there are other, a lot of different things you can do in 3ds Max, but uh, this is the, probably what I would do, at least. Change the wall thickness to 20 centimeters, for example, then width to 8 meters and the height to three meters okay and then you have a wall uh, like this you can create as you know you can hold shift and create more copies of this i can create another box for example and uh, i know that if i hit e i can rotate this if i hit a i can enable the angle snaps and rotate this 90 degrees and then you can move this you, if you use snap, you can just exactly move this point uh, to here as well. But we will talk about the snap tools in a couple of lessons. So uh, I'm not going to get into that th this tutorial. I'm going to hit T instead of that. I'm just going to eyeball the position of this box. Okay. There is a there's a cool trick because the gizmo is in here and you can't see the uh, real detail uh, from up above. You can zoom in and then just hold the object from any uh, edge and you can move it from there as well, okay? You don't need to hold the gizmo always. And then you can just place it, eyeball it, whatever, okay? And then I'm going to create another copy to this side. Uh, I'm not going to uh, be that precise at this point. I'm just, uh, I, I just pushed in, pushed this in a little bit to avoid light leaking in, but the, you shouldn't do this, of course, you should uh, model this properly, but whatever, for now, let's leave it at that. And then another copy, And you could uh, just hit T and create the bottom part and the top part as well, right? Okay, now you have a closed room and you can uh, start opening up windows. Let's hit P, Z 
and then rotate yeah uh, you can start opening up windows in here putting some uh, chairs or tables whatever inside and you can start uh, modeling your interior okay that's uh, uh, how to think of this primitive tools i guess and not just for the walls even if i was creating the chair i would start with a box or a plane i guess but whatever we'll talk about this uh, as i told you in the upcoming lessons let's start looking at other primitives other than box uh, the second one, I guess, is the second most important one is a plane, in my opinion. I guess I use plane a little bit more than a box as a starting point because uh, with planes, I really like to create organic models later on. Uh, uh, let me show you what I mean. Uh, when you create a plane like this, uh, let's say G to get rid of the grid for now, uh, you can see that we have like a 40 by 40 plane. Let's input that as well. For, this is 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters. And then I can just reduce this length and width segments to one, for example. And you can see that we have a quad plane, just a uh, polygon rather. The cool thing about this shape is when you add an edit poly on top and hit two to get to this edge selection, uh, apply the edit poly from the modifier list, hit two to go into the edge selection. And then I selected this edge. And now if I hold shift and drag this out, you can see that we can create a lot of different shapes uh, from the edge of that plane, okay? And I can just play around with it. I can hit one to go into the vertex mode and change the shape of this. As you can see, this uh, started looking like an organic uh, shape, I guess. If you, even if you throw a turbo smooth on top, then you will have a more organic shape, I guess. And you can see that you can model anything at this point, like even face or a car, I guess. Uh, plane modeling is a very common uh, way to, or uh, edge extrusion modeling, also people call this, uh, is a very common way to do stuff like that, okay? So plane is the second most important primitive, in my opinion. Let's hit G and hit Z to find our orbit. And then I guess the cylinder, we should talk about this one. And this is a cylinder shape, uh, as you can see, it has the radius option and the height option. And then uh, we have these uh, height segments, cap segments and side segments. And you can play with these to create cylindrical shapes. Uh, let's say you are trying to model a chair and you have a cylindrical leg and you can create it with this. Uh, let's think about it a little bit. Uh, let's create a box like this. Of course, you should set the base dimensions, let's say 40 by 40 by 5 centimeters. Then let's pull this up 45 centimeters. I'm reading this value in here. And then I can just create cylinder legs to this box, I guess. Okay. Uh, I hit T, uh, grab the cylinder tool, and I change the side segments to 12. Uh, the cap segments to one, height segments to one, and I've set the height to 45 because I need I want this to match the height of the box. And let's change the radius to one, for example. And then if I hit T again, I can just create, actually one is a little bit too thin. Let's change this to 1.3. And then I will hit T and create four copies of this. Uh, this is not the ideal way to do this, of course. Uh, we will learn a lot of different ways to do these kinds of stuff. Uh, but uh, for now, let's say we have something like this, okay? And also you can, let's delete everything and create a new cylinder. And you can again use this cylinder as a base and hit uh, create an edit or apply an edit mod poly modifier on top and just select this face, for example, and you can extrude this move this around, rotate this, I don't know, creating different shapes, or even you can delete this face, hit three to go into the border mode and you can select the border in here, hit W and ju just play around with this. And you can see that this primitive shape is very handy as well. We could create pipes and a lot of things from this one as well. And we will talk about the, those options in the future lessons. Okay, so let's talk about the sphere. Sphere is a sphere, <laughs> as it's uh, like the name suggests. We have a radius value, we have a segments value property, 
and also we can just disable the smoothing of the sphere uh, we can create a semi, uh, hemisphere from here from this option uh, we could chop or squash the uh, hemisphere which means chop means like slicing and squash means like keeping the segments same and just squashing the segments up uh, let me show that to you as you can see the segments position change but if you are in the chop object the segments stay the same it's like there's a slice modifier on top i guess okay let's uh, zero this value slice is a different option in here if you enable this you can just uh, slice the uh, sphere like this uh, you can change the slice from and slice to options and create a uh, slice of sphere as you like uh, base to pivot I like that one I, let me show that what that does uh, to you if you draw a sphere normally it will just uh, put the half of the sphere on the bottom of the grid as you can see but if you enable the base to pivot option it will just put the sphere on top of the grid and I really like this because sometimes I need to uh, draw spheres or create spheres on a surface and I don't want the bottom half to get into the surface and this is something I use uh, very much and by the way let's disable this and show what it does to you if you enable the auto grid option in here uh, while drawing these uh, primitives or anything actually in 3ds max you can draw anything on a surface you see for example if i enable the sphere and auto grid and then draw a sphere on top of this uh, sphere you can see that we have a uh, we we don't have that sphere on the grid on the uh, we have it on the uh, other sphere if i disable this and do the same thing you can see that we have drawn it uh, on the grid okay so uh, if we enable this and base to pivot you will see that it will draw the sphere on the surface okay not in the surface like this okay these are the options uh, for the sphere just let's go through all the other commands we left out uh, I guess torus is a let's disable the auto grid torus is a shape like this a torus shape i guess and you can play with the radius one which is the main radius and radius two is the cross section radius of the torus uh, you can rotate this uh, if you de decrease the segment count or uh, the side segment count it will be more logical to rotate as you can see we can rotate this and create different uh, versions of this and we can twist this which will twist the torus uh, along the way as you can see okay uh, you can change the sides again you can change the segments uh, again you can change the smoothing options we will talk what these uh, are important for in later lessons so let's just leave it for now you can slice this I guess uh, twisting it with a slice create it can create different uh, shapes like this cool shapes like this and this is the torus uh, let's uh, create a teapot we have used this for other examples this is just basic shape uh, to demonstrate some things in 3ds max i guess you can play with the radius and the segments of this again and you can hide uh, individual parts of this if you want okay uh, we'll talk about this text plus in another lesson because this is a uh, whole other thing <laughs> Uh, this is very important this is a very important tool so i don't want to just uh, pass it along but it helps us create these texts we'll talk about this con will draw a con uh, it could be a turncated con or just a regular con if you zero this radius two value it should be a regular con you can again change the height segments cap segments are these and the sides of these this con okay and the other options are you can recognize them from the other primitives i guess okay a geosphere is a different type of sphere uh, it it's created from these uh, mesh triangles and you can again play with the segments of this uh, you can change the base geometry type uh, octa or tetra and again you can just enable the hemisphere option and so on okay this is a different type of sphere but we usually use the regular sphere because it's it's a little bit easier to manipulate that tube let's create a tube 
Uh, it's a tube cross section cylinder, I guess. Uh, we have this thickness uh, on the sides. Uh, again, you can you have two radiuses. You can play with these uh, individually and uh, create these uh, this thickness in here, and the height is in here, and you can change the segments and stuff just like a cylinder. Okay, a pyramid is a pyramid, of course, like this. Again, uh, let's see what we can change a segment. So it's like just like a cone, I guess. Yeah, we could we can change the height and uh, width and depth separately that's the only difference i guess and we can we have the height the depth and the width yeah it's not a yeah, circular based thing so it has two uh, different uh, inputs for uh, width and de depth i guess okay these are the primitives in 3ds max as i told you we we will learn about this text plus and it's, it's very important primitive in my opinion so i'm just I'll do this in a separate lesson. Uh, so thanks for listening. Uh, I hope this was useful. If, if this was useful, please like, subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell. Thank you. See you in the next lesson.